Hello, everyone. My name is Dahlia Goname, and I recently completed my practicum with Alberta Health Services under the Walkable Alberta program. So Walkable Alberta is a provincial community engagement intervention with the goal of assisting communities in addressing their social and built environment to promote physical activity for Albertans. Uh, so through the use of a population health approach, the Walkable Alberta program can address the interrelated conditions and factors that influence health through community action and through the creation of healthy public policy. Improved walkability of local neighborhoods really is the focus of this program as it can allow for community <coughs> inclusivity, accessibility, and equity to be improved. The Walkable Alberta program is informed by the International Charter for Walking, which provides the direction for creating walkable communities around the world. So Walkable Alberta uses this uh, charter to um, create walking benchmarks for each community, as well as to highlight any opportunities, challenges, or um, uh, achievements for each community working towards improving their walkability. So some background on my report. Uh, physical activity levels remain low in Canada. Now, popular approaches to improving physical activity have focused on individual behavior change methods. However, such methods neglect to address the environment in which a person lives. So this tends to not be as sustainable as if the environment were to be addressed so that it would become more conducive to uh, promoting active transportation methods or active lifestyles. So one approach to improving physical activity is to reshape that environment. However, uh, such approaches are quite expensive and require a considerable amount of time to implement. So community engagement initiatives have been highlighted as a potential means to address the built environment through community action, as well as, to, um, as bridging the gap between uh, community planning and public health. So engaging communities and identifying local environmental barriers to walking can allow for local needs and issues to be addressed, as well as uh, ensure that any of the improvements are relevant to the needs of the community members. However, few attempts have been made to review the evidence of the impact of a community engagement approach on built environment outcomes. So I conducted a literature review to search the evidence base for the effectiveness of initiatives aiming to engage communities in action to improve their social and built environment to promote physical activity. So the inclusion and exclusion criteria of my review are shown here. Uh, so the focus of my included studies really was on community engagement in relation to the planning, design, or delivery of initiatives aimed to address the built and or social environment. Any studies that focused on physiological measures as an outcome were excluded from my review because uh, progress on this criterion is really related to a number of individual circumstances such as behavior or genetics. And so it would be difficult to create a direct link between a community engagement intervention and that physiological measure. So instead the focus really was on the community and any changes related to the process of improving the environment. So after refinement of my, ten, uh, of my search strategy, 10 articles were included in this review, and they had a mixture of methods. And the reason for including a mixture of methods in this review was because this is a relatively new area of research, and I wanted to maximize my results by uh, including the combination of, or combining the strengths of the different designs from each uh, article. So rather than using a variety of appraisal frameworks, I used the mixed methods appraisal tool to uh, evaluate the uh, quantitative, qualitative, and mixed method studies, and I use the AMSTAR 2 tool to assess the systematic review. So uh, the common goal amongst the studies it reviewed was to improve the local neighborhood walking environment through improved partnerships and enhanced collaboration techniques. There were six themes that I extracted from this review, and I will be discussing them further. So some interventions aim to improve the built environment by focusing on policy and system level changes to foster greater physical activity in the community. Now, while this does allow for more individuals to be influenced, using population reach data alone doesn't allow us to assess its impact. Advocacy efforts can be utilized to engage communities as well as provide a method for community members to express their views. These efforts included both promotional and awareness raising campaigns, as well as pedestrian safety campaigns. 
The advocacy campaign served an important purpose for engaging community members, promoting environmental improvements, as well as increasing awareness as to why these improve improvements should be made. Pedestrian safety campaigns were also able to put enough bottom-up pressure on decision makers so that they would uh, begin to address the factors that contributed to traffic-related injuries. Community engagement initiatives can also influence decisions that create positive infrastructures. Coalitions can be created to allow for varying departments, policymakers, and community representatives to come together during the development of built environment policies. And it can also minimize any delay in the policy process. So for example, one coalition was able to allow subdivision regulations to be revised so that they could become more walkable. So this was through improving vehicular, bicycle, and pedestrian connections, reducing block lengths, discouraging cul-de-sacs, and the provision of context-sensitive street design. Community engagement can also improve interagency collaboration and relationships between communities, decision makers, and service providers. As a result, social cohesion and social capital can, be, can improve due to the increased partnerships and the promotion of community involvement. Capacity building is also often cited as a benefit of community engagement approaches. Capacity can be built through increased knowledge and skills of local professionals, as well as through improving the sense of control that community members have over their local environment. So community members can take action by leading smaller scale initiatives such as planting, litter pickups, or cleanup days. And in addition to the enhancements to their environment, these initiatives can also contribute to improving social cohesion amongst the residents of the community. Now, at a higher level, Healthy Canada by Design utilized a capacity building approach to promote health supporting environments. So through this initiative, public health authorities had the opportunity to develop new relationships across sectors that influenced built environments. And while they improved their knowledge about uh, knowledge and skills for influencing land use planning processes, then the built environment decision makers were also able to increase their awareness about how their built environment policies can influence health outcomes. So the measurement of physical activity was also considered an important, important to assess the change in health outcomes following a community engagement intervention. Unfortunately, there were mixed results when it came to uh, any of the um, improvements in physical activity levels. And these conflicting findings may have been due to uh, under-resourced studies or poor measures being used to detect an effect. So we shouldn't be too quick to assume that just because there are conflicting findings that community engagement does not improve physical activity because the authors did cite that it may have been due to those under resource studies. So one important consideration was also made in one of the articles that highlights the importance of a socially enhanced environment. So the authors did find that positive benefits were only found amongst those who participated in the community engagement intervention. So the uh, investigators did hypothesize that the non-participants did not experience the same level of social interaction that the participants had the opportunity to engage in. So a common theme amongst the studies reviewed is the improvement in the social environment of communities. Previously published literature states that common pathways by which community engagement initiatives can improve health is through a, the changes in the effectiveness of the intervention, um, improvements in social and material circumstances, including social relationships and social capital, and greater control and self-efficacy of individuals as well as at the community level. The majority of the studies included in this review did find that changes related to the social environment uh, did occur, and thus such social changes do allow the community to move towards improving their built environment, to foster more opportunities for physical activity, and have health-enhancing benefits in the future. So overall, community engagement interventions are a promising strategy to be used by public health professionals to empower communities and stakeholders to take steps to import, towards improving their social and built environment. As a socio-ecological model illustrates, an improved environment does have health-enhancing benefits for its population. So I would just like to thank my practicum supervisor, Graham Matsala, for his guidance and support. I was shown a new side of health promotion work and it really helped me gain a better understanding of the work being done by health, pu public health professionals. I would also like to thank Sari for her guidance while I completed my literature review. And I would also like to thank the support from all of my classmates and my family who is here. Hi. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, Dahlia. That was a really great presentation. Thank you. Any questions? <clears throat> Thanks. That was excellent. Um, I just had a quick question. On one of your first slides, there was a link between um, um, increased walkability is, and decreased crime rates. So I was yeah. wondering um, if in your research you found anything with regards to women and children using um, walkable spaces and feeling comfortable um, in newly designed areas and how that was linked to violence. Um, so in my literature review, I tried to keep it quite broad, just related to planning processes. Um, but related, I, I did do some research on the side about uh, equity and walkability. And it's really related to just the, the feeling of safety in that environment. So I, I didn't see too much about women and children in particular because the evidence is quite broad. Um, but I can imagine that just based off of, you know, improved at lighting um, and having a, a more open environment that people feel safer to walk to their destinations and to be outside more often. Okay, one more question. <laughs> Hi, great presentation. I had a similar question on if it ever came up in discussion with your colleagues, the idea that vehicles are becoming weapons, especially in light of what just happened in Toronto, and I know there was an attack, similar attack in Edmonton. Um, were there discussions around how you can change the built environment to increase safety for people to walk to work in big city centers or just be active in general? Because now I think this is definitely a growing concern. Yeah, so uh, like I said earlier, my research that I focused on was more so on that community engagement piece. But uh, when it comes to walkable environments, um, a lot of some of the um, designs that can be used to make, it's really about slowing down traffic. And that sometimes people assume that that's through just um, uh, speed limits, but that often doesn't really do much. Uh, so it's really about you know improving, like increasing the size of sidewalks, um, having kind of like one lane routes, also increasing uh, like green space in areas. Because when you have really wide roads, and that's often what makes drivers feel like they can drive super fast and go down the road. But um, having these kind of regulations to uh, slow down the traffic itself, as well as um, like pedestrian lights as well to help control the traffic. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you.